welcome to evening prayer with the Stanford Methodist Circuit for Friday the 12th of July. Verses 6 and 7 of Psalm 17, the psalm recommended for today by the Methodist Church Prayer Handbook, have an appropriate message to call us into our shared time of worship, prayer and reflection as we continue our week focused on the theme of the call of Moses. Psalm 17 verses 6 and 7. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me, hear my words. Wondrously show your steadfast love, O Saviour of those who seek refuge from their adversaries at your right hand. We continue in prayer. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our ancestors, creator of the changes of day and night, giving rest to the weary, renewing the strength of those who are spent, bestowing upon us songs for singing in the evening. As you have protected us in the day that is past, so be with us in the coming night. Keep us from every sin, every evil and every fear, for you are our light and salvation and the strength of our life. To you be glory for endless ages, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. We share the worship song recommended for today by the prayer handbook, The Right Hand of God is Writing in Our Land, originating in the Caribbean Conference of Churches around 40 years ago. This song reflects aspects of God's work in the lives of both Moses and Jesus, and this recording of it is by the Methodist British Methodist Youth Choir. It's accompanied by video graphics from Paul Coleman's YouTube channel. The right hand of God is writing in our land.
scripture readings this week are taken from the book of Exodus. We now hear Sir David Suchet reading from Exodus chapter 4 verse 27 to the first verse of chapter 5 from the New International Version of the Bible. The Lord said to Aaron, Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. So he met Moses at the mountain of God and kissed him. Then Moses told Aaron everything the Lord had sent him to say and also about all the signs he had commanded him to perform. Moses and Aaron brought together all the elders of the Israelites, and Aaron told them everything the Lord had said to Moses. He also performed the signs before the people, and they believed. And when they heard that the Lord was concerned about them and had seen their misery, they bowed down and worshipped. Afterwards, Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Let my people go, so that they may hold a festival to me in the wilderness. A whole chapter or so has been missed out between yesterday's recommended reading, ending at Exodus 3.15, and today's reading beginning at Exodus 4.27. Being aware of what's in that missing section helps us to reflect on today's reading. The final verses of chapter 3 are an extended speech by God, the purpose of which is to assure Moses that the people of Israel will listen to Moses, that they will believe that God, I am, has called and sent Moses to be their deliverer, and that God's purposes will be fulfilled. The Israelites will come to freedom, to the promised land of milk and honey. Most of chapter 4 records what one of my Bibles calls Moses' miraculous powers, powers which Moses received from God in response to his continued expressions of doubt that the Israelites would listen to him or believe him. The first miraculous sign comes as Moses responds to God's command to throw his staff on the ground. It turns into a snake of which Moses was naturally afraid. However, when Moses obeyed God's command to grab the snake by its tail, it turned back into the staff. The second miraculous sign was when Moses obeyed God's command to put his hand into his cloak. When he withdrew it, his hand showed the signs of leprosy. But when Moses put his hand back into his cloak and removed it, the signs of leprosy had disappeared. Finally, God told Moses that if the people wouldn't believe because of these signs, he should pour some water from the river Nile on the ground, where it would turn to blood. Despite all of this, Moses persisted in telling God that he wasn't up to the task, especially that he lacked the power of eloquent speech. God promised to go with Moses, but still Moses said to God, Oh my Lord, please send someone else. We hear this sort of protest and request over and over again in the scriptures when people are challenged by God's call. In the end, God told Moses that his brother Aaron was on his way to meet him. Moses would speak confidently to Aaron about God's purposes and Aaron would be Moses's and therefore God's mouthpiece. So Moses ceased his protect protesting. He took his staff in his hand and set off back to his father-in-law Jethro to ask for his permission to return to Egypt. Permission was granted and Moses began his journey. Which finally brings us to today's reading, in which we heard that while Moses was on his way, his brother Aaron met him in the wilderness. They went to a mountain which, as we've noted before in our reflections, is often a locational indicator that God is about to do something significant. In fulfilment of what God had said, Moses told Aaron about his conversation with God and the miraculous powers which with, with which God had endowed Moses. These powers were demonstrated to the people, and contrary to Moses' initial fears, the people believed that he'd been sent by God, who had heard their cries of suffering. Their response was to worship. 
there's only one thing left for Moses and Aaron to do, to go and relay to Pharaoh the word of the Lord, let my people go. A thread running through our prayers this week has been the inclusion of various recordings of a freedom song which originated in South Africa. This evening's recording of Freedom is Coming was made during the COVID-19 pandemic in tribute to those affected by the virus and those on the front lines. It's by the Marymount Singers from New York. Freedom is Coming. us to recognise suffering for what it is, and never to cloak it with a nobility it does not have. May we accept suffering with courage when it is inevitable, but also resist and protest against it when we should. May we give real comfort to those who suffer, and work to relieve suffering everywhere, and give us the faith to trust profoundly that there is no suffering so deep that your powerful love cannot transform it. God in Christ, impassable yet suffering, mighty yet broken, crucified yet risen, comfort us with your wounded hands and endure, endure with us every suffering and every pain and give us courage and grace to do this for others too, even at the deepest cost. Amen. We share the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And once again we end with a prayer adapted from some words written by Kate Compston. Let us pray. God our liberator, 
who with a strong hand led the people of Israel out of slavery to freedom. Through the hands of Jesus, your son, you healed the sick, releasing them from bondage. And through the piercing of his hands on the cross, you brought the world from death to life. Make us healers and liberators too. Take our hands into yours, that we may touch all creation with your love. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for sharing in this evening's time of prayer and reflection. God bless you.